Hey there, it's Chris from Soterra Media. I have a very, very, very quick tutorial for you today. Um, it's just a fun little technique to get some, you know, more realistic camera shake. And, you know, if we wanted to add camera shake to this chest footage, that was obviously shot on a tripod, we would want to come in here. You, know, you could come in, grab a camera, camera shake node, and plug it in. And you got yourself the, <laughs> the world's most, most earthquake-laden uh, chess game in the world. And of course we can tune it how we'd like. But to me, this feels kind of like, like algorithmic. It feels like, because it is. I mean, it's a computer trying to, you know, approximate camera shake. And, you know, in a pinch, this can be really good, but um, I'd like to propose a different way of doing it. And this is something that can be done in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the shake from this footage and apply it to this footage. It's really easy to do. So I'll show you how real quick. Just come into the Fusion page. We're going to grab a uh, tracker node. So we've got our tracker node. We'll go to the beginning. And this spot here should do what we need. Let's zoom out a little. Actually, we'll make this full. And we'll just put it in the middle there. And we'll narrow our search just a bit. And we'll track forward. Now this would apply to any footage. Just find a a good um, spot, um, a prominent feature that stays stationary in relation to the camera. And we'll just check out our track, make sure that's looking good. And it does. Okay. Now this is probably the quickest, dirtiest way to do it. Um, there are more advanced ways of doing it. I, we could probably pull this off using the camera tracker as well, but I haven't done it that way. I usually use Mocha to do this and just do a quick planar track on some surface in the image and usually that's enough. Um, then we'll, what we'll do is we'll control controller command C and copy this tracker and then we'll come into our footage that we want to destabilize and we'll open it in the fusion page and paste this in. So this is going to go in the input. Oops. And we'll get a little organized and this will also go into the foreground yeah whatever good enough in terms of organization <laughs> um, and then what we'll do is we'll come into the tracker go to operation and choose match move and we'll say foreground only now one thing I like to do um, in order to see where my footage is going when we go back out into the edit page is I'll bring down a background node and then we'll bring down a merge node and we're going to merge this the output of this tracker which now is shaky and we'll merge that over top of our original footage but in this case I'm going to plug the background into the um, background input of the merge node and I'm going to change the color and this is not necessary, but I like to make it red so I can see. So now we have a background, a red background and our shaky footage. Now, one thing of note, if we don't like the speed of it, we can open up the keyframes tab and we'll find our tracker and we'll select these and we can then make these longer or shorter to make it faster. So now it's going to be going all over the place. So we'll make this just the length that we need. Beautiful. Then we'll go out back out to the edit page. And now what we want to do is just take off the edges. So we'll zoom in. So that way we're not getting any of the edges. Now, of course, since we are cropping in, 
um, you want to be cognizant of the um, the desired output of your footage. So you will be cropping in. You want to make sure that you're starting with higher resolution footage, um, if need be. But now, have some nice. Uh, I gotta play through. And we'll push that up just a little bit more. Now we're looking good. Another thing you can do, I think this should help. I'm usually not um, doing this with shake that's super aggressive. Uh, but you can, in the merge node, turn on your motion blur. I don't... You know... It's something you'll want to experiment with. I don't think we're going to see much of it in here. Unless we like really up the shutter angle. No, you're not going to see too much of it with this footage, but that's a nice thing to have on. I always just turn it on just to be sure. So yeah, if your footage is a lot more, if you're using, you know, camera shake, that's a little more aggressive. You want to make sure to have that motion blur on. I haven't experimented with that, like I said, so I'm not sure. Um, you know, realism wise, what you end up with really, really shaky footage, but you know, it's a good place to start, but you know, you can experiment with it, kind of see what happens. So now that we have our footage like this, obviously that's good to go. Now, one thing that you can do, which is kind of cool, um, in case you weren't aware, these nodes, they are all, uh, text-based. So if I control C or command C, alrighty. So I've opened up notepad and I'm going to paste that node in there. So we are actually looking at that tracker node. Now, why is this important? Well, one thing that you can do if you wanted to have kind of a collection of camera shake to, you know, go off of, save this, I, you know, for me, I would use an app like Evernote. Um, just my note taking app of choice. You can kind of paste these in there and whenever you need this tracker, you can just copy. So I'm going to copy all this. And when I go back to fusion, oh, I'm going to close the keyframes real quick. You can paste that in. So that is w the tracker node just pasted right back in. It's a great way to share nodes with your friends. So yeah, to summarize, all you do, just track a point on uh, footage that you want to steal the camera shake from, take that tracker node, put it in the uh, fusion page of a uh, of footage that you want to add the shake to, plug your footage in to both uh, inputs on the tracker node, the foreground and background, switch it to match move, foreground only, add a background for color if you'd like, and then you're good. And then you just need to make sure that your footage doesn't leave the frame. So that's just a quick tutorial I just wanted to share with everybody. It's a fun, it's a cool little uh, technique that I find a lot better than um, most, you know, camera shake processes that are done via an algorithm or something like that. This just ends up looking more natural because it is natural. It's you're actually tracking, you know, the camera shake of somebody who is actually holding a camera. And, you know, it's something that you could, you know, set up a tracking point and, you know, hold a camera on your own and do it a bunch of times, you know, and then save that data that you track into, you know, a node app of some kind. And then you have a nice collection of uh, nodes that will allow you to add that camera shake without having to, you know, go in and track a random piece of footage every time. But anywho, if you liked what you saw, consider subscribing if you want. Ask me questions in the comments. I like to answer them. Um, and of course, always let me know what other types of things you'd like to see. Anyway, take care and be good to others.